Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial where we're going to dive into an exciting way to enhance your AI chatbot and applications. Whether you're working with documents, website, or any other data source, being able to retrieve and generate relevant information is key to creating a powerful and responsive system. Before we get started, let's talk about a concept that is central to this process, Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. How does Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, work compared to a traditional language model? Imagine you're asking the question, who's the President of the United States? When the question is asked, the retriever component springs into action. It searches through external sources, such as documents, websites, or a database, to find the most relevant and up-to-date information. In this case, it might find a statement saying, Joe Biden is the 46th and current President of the United States, assumed office on January 2021. This retrieved knowledge is then used to generate the final response by sending the information to the LLM, asking it to respond based on the facts from the knowledge base. The LLM will take both the question and the fact and generate a response. Couldn't we just ask the LLM for this information? We could, but that would depend on the knowledge base cutoff of the LLM. So if the LLM was trained on data before 2021, then it would not have the information as the model would rely on pre-existing knowledge. Even if the model was trained on this information, it might be outdated or less specific. With RAG, the system combines the power of retrieval and generation, allowing it to produce a response that is informed by the most current and relevant data available. Here we are with our previous example of simple chat application. We're not going to start a new application, but instead build on top of our simple chat. We made a few modifications to our app to get it ready, so let's review that. You'll notice that now we have a prompt asking the user if they want to use the model or the knowledge base. The model option will allow the user to chat with the system. We also updated the chat with model method so that it can be reused for our RAG system. The section that makes the call to Olama for chat completion is now its own method. We've also updated the chat with a model so that it can end when the user types forward slash by or empty spaces. Okay, now that our app is ready, let's update it so that we can chat with outside knowledge base. This section of the image labeled retriever and knowledge represents the process of accessing and utilizing a knowledge base to answer user's question. In this context, we can use the kernel memory, a Microsoft open source library to handle this process. Kernel memory allows us to store and retrieve information effectively, acting as the retriever in this scenario by converting documents or websites into text and importing that text into kernel memory. We create a searchable knowledge base. When a user asks a question, kernel memory retrieves the relevant information from this stored data, fulfilling the role of the retriever in the image. So we made some modification to our chat application. First, we renamed the project in the solution, chat with a knowledge base, and added some new methods and operations in here. We also added the kernel memory. We did that by going into tools and then NuGet package manager. Then we installed two NuGet packages, the Microsoft kernel memory abstraction and the Microsoft kernel memory core. So as you can see, we've kept the select llama model because we're going to need this regardless whether we're chatting with an LLM or the knowledge base. Next, we inform the user of a selection that they need to do to chat either with an LLM or with a knowledge base. If the user selected the LLM, we keep the same code as before where the user can start chatting. If the user selected to chat with a knowledge base, we go to a different method, import document. In the import document, the user has two options, selecting a document or a web page. This is importing either a document or we go to the web page and read the contents. We then choose the user selection. And if the user selected zero, then we go ahead and import the document. If the user selected one, and we go ahead and import the web page. Now, both of these classes have the same method. And as you can see, we have our document importer and web page importer. These classes are empty, they are stubbed out, and this is just gonna be an overview of how the structure is set up. So if we go to the class, as you can see, there's nothing implemented, and we will do that next. 
once we have the document imported we use the document text if we are given a file name then we want to go read the content of the file and return that into a string variable if it's a web page then we do the same thing we go to the web page read it and return a string that represents the web page next we create a kernel memory variable and we will go over this in a second next we represent the user with option first that the document was imported successfully and what would they like to retrieve from the document we wait for the user's response and then send the response to kernel memory and then get the results and display that to the console so now let's go over how the kernel memory object is set up we declare a kernel memory builder then we have four methods that we set up. The first one is a custom prompt provider. The second is a embedding generator. The third one is a custom text generator. And the last one is a simple vector DB. The vector DB is going to be our knowledge base where all the documents that are read will be stored. In this specific instance, we are using a simple vector database. It's going to be file type disk. We have two options. We can use volatile, which will be in memory, or we can choose disk which will be a file system. We'll go ahead and choose disk for this example. Then we have the Olama text generator. Now this is also stepped out. If we go in, as you can see, nothing is done here. We will implement this in a little bit. The Olama text generator is responsible for communicating with the LLM. Next, we have the Olama text embedding. When we read the document and we put it in the vector database, we need to have the text vectorized and we use a technique called embedding. Once the document has been vectorized, then how do we actually go and read the information? What will happen is that when the user is asking a question, we take that user's question and we also apply embedding to the question. Now we have a set of vectors for the user's question and we have a set of vectors for the knowledge base. We will use these vectors mathematically to find the related information. Once we find the related information, we return that part of the document where it will communicate with the LLM. Olama prompt provider is responsible for gluing the user's question and the data that came back from the vector database and sending that to the Olama text generation so that the user's question can be answered. Here we have our Olama which is using the Mistral 7B Instruct version 3. And we're asking a question about Albert Einstein's formula. And what we're really looking for is that E equals MC square. And it has all the information. So we know that the model is trained on Albert Einstein. And next one asking when was Albert Einstein born? We can see that it can respond when and where Albert Einstein was born. What we want to do is now to use our own data and not rely on the training that the model has done. So basically, we want to use our RAG system to be able to answer questions on our documents and not based on the training that it has had previously. So if we go back to our program, we have a file here. And this file basically has some information about Albert Einstein. But nowhere in here do we have Albert Einstein's birth and where he was born. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and execute this program and see how it's functioning. You'll notice now that we have one additional model here and we're no longer using option seven as our LLM model to be selected. And the reason for that is because we now have another model added in here. And this is an embedded model, which is a little bit different than a large language model. And we'll explain what embedding is in a little bit. So now we're going to use option eight and we're going to go to our knowledge base. Next, we can have the option of importing a document or a web page or chatting with a knowledge base. So if you have previously imported a document, then you can just go to chatting with the knowledge base. So in this scenario, I've already imported our document and we'll go over the code and how this is done. Just go into chat with the knowledge base. In this scenario, this document has already been uploaded into our knowledge base. So we're going to choose option two. So now we need to ask a question. Our program is now querying the knowledge base and then sending that information over to our LLM to retrieve the information. 
we have our question and we can see that we now have a response coming back and we have the source of where the information came from and this is the information we uploaded to our knowledge base so now if we rerun our application and this time we're going to ask when albert einstein was born the knowledge base does not have this information and we should not have any information coming back as you can see that information is not found within our knowledge base so we can rely that this operation is succeeding by retrieving information from our document and not from the large language models training data now let's review the implementation of the code so if we come down here we can see that we have the document importer as well as the web page importer. So if we were to go to look at the details, all we're doing is going to read the file and return a string, which is the content of the file. We do the same thing for the web page. We're using HTTP client to read a URL that's provided and then return the content of that as a string. So now that we have the string, we're going to import that into our kernel memory using the import text async, which is the text that we have from either our web page or our document. Now, once we import this, because this is a vector database, as we've assigned over here, which is file-based, that's going to be on our file system. So if we were to go to our bin directory, now this is going to be saved in the file system in a directory called vector directory, and this is going to be wherever the executable is, or if you provide a path, then it will, it will upload the documents there. So if we come in here, there's our vector directory. If we open this we have default and then we have a document here and this document is going to be the document we imported we've only imported one file which was the Albert Einstein so that's going to be this file if we open this it's going to be a JSON object let's format this document so now that the document is formatted as you can see we have an identification we have some tags and then we have some payload and then we have a vector so for the payload we have the content it's going to be because we send it as text it's going to have content that text but our text is in here and it is encoded and it's going to also record the embedding that was used which is chat with a knowledge base or llama embedding and then the time that it was imported and then this text is then embedded using our embedding model let's go ahead and close this we're not going to save this so next we're going to go ahead and look at the olama import provider and all we're doing here is we have a prompt and then we have a fallback and then we're going to use this prompt based on the prompt name that's passed which is going to be answer with facts and that's going to be our prompt if we didn't have a prompt then the fallback would take over and try to read a prompt for us in this case in our scenario it's going to read this prompt and how this prompt is structured is that we have a facts area we have a user's question area and then we have some rules and what will happen is that these rules define what the LLM is supposed to do the user's question is going to be inserted here the facts that were found within our knowledge base is going to be inserted here and then this will be sent over to the LLM and these rules will be applied to the user's question as it pertains to the facts so now let's go take a look at the Olama embedding text. So here we're going to have our payload and our payload is going to have a model and then the input, which is going to be our prompt. And then the model is going to be the embedded model, not the LLM model. So we have our max token. Now this max token is going to depend based on what your large language model can handle, but we just chose 4096 because it's a safe number. Next, what we're going to do is have the tokens counted based on the text. This way, the knowledge base retriever knows how to break the document so that our LLM can handle the number of tokens. So if our, our large language model can only handle 4096, but let's say we have 8,000 tokens, then we need to break this up so that it can handle the maximum tokens. To generate embeddings, we read the text we send it to our model and then read the response and if it's successful we're going to return the embedding now olama is going to have its own embedding response our kernel memory has a different model that it needs once we retrieve the olama 
response for the embedding. We need to extract the embeddings and then convert it into an embedding that the kernel memory understands and return that. Then for the text generation, we have our Olama client and our Olama model. And then we have our maximum token of 4096. Then we can also get the tokens based on the text being sent over. Next, we use the chat helper to make a call to our language model based on the prompt and the model, and then get the response and return back. And that's how we've implemented the RAG system. Thank you for joining us for this quick introduction to implementing a RAG system. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you on the next video.